Hi guys, Mark here. Thank you for joining me. In this tutorial, we're going to be making a paracord flogger with the help of whip making techniques. We begin our project by setting up the core for our handle. In my case, this is a metal pipe, but you can also use a dowel rod or a metal rod instead. The diameter is 3 quarters of an inch and the length is 6 inches. This is enough for a nice compact handle. For a longer one, like this one here, use 8 inches for your core. To hold your pipe or rod in place while you're plating over it, Place it into a vise. Alternatively, drill a hole into a piece of wood at a bit of an angle. Clamp down your wood onto the table and you have a nice, secure way of fixing your pipe in place. For the cordage, I'm going to be using Paracord 550. For my main plating and faults, I'm going to be using 4 strands in one color, 4 in the other. Each strand is 8 feet long and I'm going to remove the inner strands out of all of my strands. The cord setup for my plating is something that I usually over-engineer, but still, I like to keep things neat. I have split my 8 strands into 2 sets of 4, in an alternating color combination. I marked the two center points of my two sets, which I'm now going to bring together. I'm now going to weave these four cords through these four. First one goes over under, over under. The second one does the reverse, under, over, under, over. The next one Again, does the opposite to the previous one. Over, under, over, under. Our final chord again goes the opposite to our previous one. Under, over, under, over. A simple woven pattern. Line all of your strands up. Maybe secure your cords together a bit more. We are going to be plating using pairs of strands. We have four pairs on the right. One, two, three, four. 
four on the left. One, two, three, four. We always begin at the top. Top right pair passes behind over the first pair on the left, then under, over, under, and back to the bottom on the right. Top left pair passes behind over the first pair on the right side, then under, over, under, and back to the bottom on the left. Top right pair behind, over, Under, over, under, to the bottom on the right. Top left pair, behind, over, under, over, under, to the bottom on the left. Top right pair behind over under over under to the bottom on the right. Top left pair behind Over, under, over, under, to the bottom on the left. Top right pair, behind, over, under, over, under, to the bottom on the right. Top left pair behind, over, under, over, under, to the bottom on the left. So at this point, we have used all of our pairs, both on the right side and on the left, once. For now, do a bit of tightening up. Remove your pins. Continue tightening up to reduce any gaps in your plating. Here is a bit more plating up close, from a different angle. Top right pair, behind, over, under, over, under, to the bottom on the right. Top left pair, behind, Over, under, over, under.
I still need the plate over this part hidden in the wood. So I'm going to raise it up with the help of a dowel rod or a stick, then continue plating over the other side. So up to here. After plating to the top of our handle, we are going to secure our plating with a binding. Grab a thick piece of thread, place one end facing the top like this. Grab the other longer end, pass it around, and into our opening. Tighten up, position your binding where you want it to be. In my case, let's say here. Repeat the same thing. Around, into the opening, tighten up. This second pass is going to lock our binding in place. Then simply repeat a number of times. How many really depends on the length of your thread and your willingness to do it. After a number of hitches, tie the two ends together using a reef knot. Trim the two ends. Melt them. and your binding is complete. To close the opening at the top, we are going to tie a foot rope knot using pairs of strands. Spread apart your ends a little bit. Then tie a crown knot. Grab a pair, pass it counterclockwise over the next pair. Then the next pair passes counterclockwise over the next pair. Then the next pair passes counterclockwise over the next one. Repeat this until you reach your final pair. Your final pair of strands is going to travel into the opening created by the first pair that you used. Slightly tighten up by pulling on all of your ends.
grab a pair pass it over a pair coming out of your plating then through the center of your knot Grab the next pair and repeat. Over a pair of strands coming out of your plating, then up through the center of the knot. Do this with all of your ends. When done, begin tightening up your foot rope knot. Arranging strands Pulling slack from your plating into the ends. So this closes up the top. To reduce any gaps in my plating, I'm going to roll my handle under a piece of wood. Usually I do this on the floor. The next step is optional. I'm going to add a leather collar at the top and bottom of my handle. Over these leather collars, we're going to tie our decorative knots later on. The collars basically raise your knots a little bit, 
which looks nice. My leather strip is an inch wide. I'm going to punch a few holes into my strap. on both sides. I'm going to saddle stitch my collar into place, threading two needles onto a piece of thread, one to each side. At the top, we turn around, doing a few back stitches. Just to secure the threads into place. Trim the two ends, melt them, our color is ready. One more at the bottom. The colors are set. We're going to cover them up using decorative knots. Usually I tie my knots directly onto the colors. To make things a bit easier to see, I'm instead going to tie them on a broomstick handle, then transfer them onto the colors.
you will need two pieces of paracord 550 with the inner strands removed. Each piece is 4 feet long. Pick one, attach one end under a rubber band placed on the broomstick handle. Attach a lacing needle onto the other end. Let's tie a 7 part 6 byte Turk's head. Come around over the standing end. Around again over this part here. Then travel the opposite to this strand. So under over. Double up your standing end, traveling under over. Again, travel the opposite to this strand, over under over. Split the two parallel strands. Traveling between them, doing the opposite. Over, under, over. And again, the opposite to this strand. Under, over, under, over. Continue by doubling up the standing end. Under, over, under, over. Travel the opposite to this strand here. Over, under, over, under over. Split the two parallel strands, traveling between them, doing the opposite. Over, under, over, under, over. And here, our final pass, the opposite to this strand, under, over, under, over, under, over. Reaching the standing end, Place your working end next to it. Then to finish up the knot, slide your working end under the knot to the right side. Later on, this will make this end easier to trim. For now, grab a new cord Attach a lacing needle onto one end. Slide the standing end next to the first one. Then double up your knot. Following the standing end through the entire knot.
work your second working hand just like the first one. Like this. Then under the knot all the way to the right. Slide the knot off of your mandrel, place it onto your flogger. Tighten up the knot, starting at the standing end, going through the knot into the working end. Trim the ends as close to the knot as possible. Repeat the knot at the other side. Roll the knot just like your plating. With the handle done, let's move on to the tails. I'm going to do a bit more tightening on the stop knot. Then I'm going to trim my folds at about a foot and a half. For the folds, you can do all types of knots and setups. Here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to tie an overhand knot. Let's say here. I'm going to fill each fold with a couple of BBs. pushing them all the way to my knot. So after a few BBs, in my case 5, I'm going to tie another overhand knot, push it next to my BBs, and one of my folds is done. I do this BB technique 
Since I like this look between the two knots. Plus, it adds a bit of weight to the folds. So next fold, same thing. This concludes this particular tutorial on a paracord flogger. Naturally, you can do a ton of modifications on this design. From the handle, the finishing knots, the folds, you have a lot of options. For now, thank you for joining me and see ya next time.